guys, I want to welcome you to the weekly Wednesday for the Financial Freedom Newsletter, where every week, every Wednesday, we delve into something inspirational, motivational, something excerpt taken from the Financial Freedom Weekly Newsletter. Wherever you are, if you're listening on Spotify, on iTunes, Google, be sure to click the like, subscribe, share, comment. Without ado, let's get into the show. Welcome, everybody, to this week's podcast episode for the Financial Freedom Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Christopher Liu. And as you know, we talk about four different types of freedom, time, financial, location, health freedom. And I'm always scouring the globe, looking for entrepreneurs, doing things on the cutting edge and changing the world. So today we have a special guest. Dustin Reekman, and he is on a um, mission driven purpose to help entrepreneurs rapidly increase profits without paid ads using a partnership marketing system. So um, he's a strategic marketing coach, and it's going to be a really fascinating discussion about high ticket sales, business growth, and the partnership marketing system. So with that, I'm happy to welcome Dustin to the show. Welcome. Yeah, thanks, Chris. It's my pleasure. Really excited to be here and share a little of my story with your audience. Yeah, I know we had connected through um, Podmatch and Podfest, and so tell people your story, your business, and what it does. Oh, absolutely. So, really quick, uh, as I think a lot of our entrepreneurial journeys go, it's a little, it's a little uh, varied. <laughs> but my <laughs> professional career is actually as an engineer. Um, so I come from that background and I uh, was a practicing civil engineering consultant for 15 years. But during the course of my career, I had a lot of side hustles and online businesses, uh, the first of which was a company called Engaged Marriage, which grew out of marriage ministry my wife and I were doing. And so that brought me online in 2009. And then I got pulled into digital marketing as we were growing that business and doing courses and books and, and all those things. Um, and then the digital marketing pulled me into digital marketing consulting and working for a bunch of other companies, which pulled me out of engineering. So I left engineering as a as a full time endeavor in 2017 and have been full time entrepreneur since. Um, and so a couple of key things that have happened in in that journey. One of the clients I had as a marketing consultant was a local butcher shop, and uh, the third generation owner of that butcher shop and and myself hit it off. And he said, "Hey, I have this other product." I'd like to bring online called Fire Creek Snacks. And so that uh, I, I got pulled into that and Shopify and e-commerce and, and helped him grow that business and then became a partner in the business. Ultimately did a lot of traveling and trade shows and learned like wholesale and, and a whole different part of the, of the business world. And then COVID happened. <laughs> and so in 2020, uh, I was driving to a trade show and they said the trade show is canceled. And uh, also all half your marketing clients are now gone because the businesses were shut down. I was working with like dentists and, and real estate brokers, et cetera. So that brought me in the summer of 2020 onto my first podcast as a podcast guest. And that's really where my current business picks up. Um, so I had been on about 50 podcasts and we grew Fire Creek Snacks to seven figures with no paid ads. And that became kind of my calling card and, and people started noticing what I was doing and started asking questions. And so, uh, yeah, it ultimately led to business coaching, marketing strategy. And now I run mastermind groups that are helping entrepreneurs use podcast guesting as a vehicle to grow their business, um, which is kind of crazy because before 2020, I had never been a business coach or had ever been on a podcast. And now it's like uh, my full-time my full time gig. <laughs> so that's that's a little glimpse into why I'm so passionate about podcast guesting and, and other forms of partnership marketing. Yeah, it's quite interesting. You and I uh, followed the same kind of journey and then kind of COVID kind of basically forced people to think differently. And some of them made it into full-time and new careers and new businesses. Kudos to you. Um, Tell us, uh, you know, this is interesting. This, uh, what is a partnership marketing system, and how does it work? Yeah, so the way I talk about partnership marketing is basically borrowing other people's audiences um, in a way that's really a win-win-win scenario. So podcast guesting would be one form of partnership marketing. So, in, in we're doing it right now, but basically uh, the win for the brand or me in this case would be exposure to an audience that might be interested in what I have to say. They might become part of my community. They might want to buy a product from me at some point, but that's the win for me. 
than to win for your audience is hopefully they're going to learn something today, a strategy, a sto- an inspirational story, something that really helps them. And then, of course, the win for you, Chris, as the host, is if I'm serving your audience well, then that's going to increase the downloads of your podcast, make you look good because you've got good guests. And so it's really a win, win, win. Like in that scenario, no one loses. Um, we're all like rising, the rising tides floating all our boats. And that's really what partnership marketing is in a nutshell. So podcast guesting is like a, a kind of a universal way to do it for an online business, but some other ideas to give people get their wheels turning. Um, for my Fire Creek Snacks brand, a big one for us was subscription box placements. So the idea that we would donate or give at a discount product into a subscription box, say a ketogenic diet box, well, we get a win and brand exposure to our ideal customer. The consumer gets a win because they get to find a cool new brand that they really like. And then the subscription box wins because it's feeding their economic model by getting new product. So there's lots of examples of this, but that's the main mindset is like, how can you get what you do in front of your target market? for free, uh, basically through education and through serving that, that the end user in a, in a fun, creative way. Yeah. And that, uh, it's, it's interesting. It's like, um, basically bartering and it's like, so bartering social capital relationship, relationship capital. And it's, it's a fantastic way, especially social media. Um, you know, there's different ways of, um, measuring, um, capital so it's not just financial or you know there's now different types um so this is quite interesting leveraging that type uh one thing is uh the audiences you know this is picked some of their interests and then you know but a lot of them are thinking okay um i I don't know anybody or you have a relative stranger how do you create successful uh win-win partnership yeah you know the 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 key to it is leading with the win so it's it's not it's being giving and not self-serving so if I'm thinking of, it could be a, even going all the way back to the Fire Creek business partnership. That's like the ultimate partnership, right? As a business partnership, um, that's that's sort of the marriage version. But most of the time, we're more like dating. It's like we're, we're <laughs> borrowing each other's audiences, but it's not that serious. Um, but it, even in a business partnership, um, I think it's instructive to talk about with Ryan, my business partner and I, he was paying me to market his brick and mortar butcher shops. And that was great. Then when he had this idea of taking this product online, I said, don't pay me. I I can go create a Shopify store. I'll help you build an email list and we'll start selling. If it doesn't work, no harm, no no foul. If it does work, then let's figure out a way then for me to be compensated. So for him, it was like, sure, let's try this. It's only an upside. And for me, it was something I was wanting to learn how to do anyway. I really liked the product and believed in it. I knew it was going to work, but like that would be an example of I gave first. So even though he was a relative stranger, I, I didn't provide any risk, right? So it wasn't like there's no downside. And I think with say podcast guesting, for example, maybe you don't know anyone, but you know, if you've been in business a little while, you know who your target market is. So where does your target market hang out? Where do they aggregate? What do they, what podcasts do they listen to? And then you identify that podcast and then you reach out to the podcast host talking about how you can serve their audience. So again, you don't need to know the host all the host cares about when they open this email is does this person like a random weirdo from the internet or do they actually know who I am? And you're going to know who they are because you're going to do a little research. And most importantly, are they interesting and would they serve my audience? And if you can, in three to five bullet points, talk about what you can share with the audience that would be intriguing, fun, instructive, that they're going to say yes. Right. So that I, I get that a lot. Like, well, what if I don't know anyone? Like, well, you don't need to know anyone personally, but you can still run this this partnership marketing system um, if you have the right mindset. And um, in, I love that. And it's basically basically growing your network and um, forming relationships. And um, it sounds like you can translate this sort of partnership marketing system, growing your network, uh, branding yourself. Um, what results have you seen by building and forming these relationships online? Sure. Uh, it's it's uh, it's a loaded question because there's been so many. So I, I, I joke to my real life friends and family, like most of the people I know are people I met through podcast guesting, um, either the host or fellow guests who have a former relationship with, or of course, the audience who hears me and reaches out and something about my story compels them and they have a question and then we connect on LinkedIn, you know, kind of it, it kind of takes different forms. But yeah, I mean, one one real tangible example to kind of give people a financial uh, outcome from from doing this. So I was on a show called called Brand Builders, but it was by a company called Snack Nation, and they're a big subscription box company. And 
but they had a really cool podcast that dove deep into brands and like where origin of the brand, what's special about the brand, nitty gritty details about like packaging ingredients, et cetera. So I was like, well, this, I wanted to be featured in the subscription box, but they were way out of our league, but I thought we had a cool story. So I actually got us, I pitched them and got us featured talking about the business story behind Fire Creek Snacks and how it came about. And then um, it went well. And then we got, did get a small placement in their box and we got good reviews. And that was kind of the end of it. Like we donated the snacks. It was not a great financial reward initially, <laughs> but it got us kind of our foot in the door. And so literally a year later, so I plant, I talk a lot about planting seeds. So like I plant, you plant these different seeds and they will reap a harvest. You don't know if it's today, next year, two years from now and how big the harvest will be. But in this case, there was a woman who reached out to me in January, 2022 and said, Hey, I, I, I'm the new category manager for Salty Snacks for Snack Nation. I have looked at the reviews of our previous products and you guys had really good reviews. I've tried the product. It's really good. And I went back to our Brand Builder podcast and I listened to all the stories of founders in our category and I just love your story. What's your capacity? And I was like, well, it's pretty high. Why? You know. And so she, uh, long story short, she placed a purchase order for $550,000 with the Snack Sticks. Um, that we would have never had a chance at had we not planted the seed of building that relationship through a podcast appearance. Yeah, that's amazing. It's like, you know, just a simple message into a, such a large, you know, order. Um, it's amazing. Uh, it'd, be, it'd be interesting to see, like, go back on your, um, to see which uh, guests or which um, content would be, is like the most uh, biggest ROI. Uh, that's one of them for us, for sure. <laughs> It's a, and I love this uh, idea where it's kind of like, um, and it's almost like, uh, it's like basically intellectual capital. And then you're basically creating value from that. Um, how do, uh, you know, a lot of people, they're like, okay, interesting, but, uh, why do so many business owners get stuck and, um, in this area, what's the key to them moving forward with confidence? Yeah. I think a lot of people don't give themselves enough credit. Like they don't realize that what they know and the, the the learnings that they've acquired in running their business, for example, if they want to get on and talk about what services they provide or the products they sell to ourselves, it's no big deal, right? Because we've been living with it in our brain for years. But if you get out and actually like talk about where you came up with this idea or like client success stories or a personal story of how what you do, like why you do what you do, like the purpose behind what you do, just getting out and talking about where this came from and why it's important to you personally, like that's where people get stuck a lot of times. It's like, well, who wants to interview me? Like, I don't have anything to say. I'm no one special. I'm not doing anything that unique. But actually, you are because you are you. Your story is yours alone. And even if you sell something that a lot of people sell, the, the reason you sell it, the way you came about selling it, the, the, the passion you have for selling it still has a lot of value. And so I think that's first and foremost is don't discount. Um, just because you already know something doesn't mean that, that anyone listening couldn't get value from it. Yeah. Yeah. And then a lot of this uh, not only ties into um, not just business, but it talks about, for example, um, some entrepreneurs, they do um, high ticket sales. But one of the problems with high ticket sales is, you know, they feel like they're being like the clients feel like they're being pressured and or it's just too salesy. Um, tell us how using this um, partnership marketing system, you can use three keys to low pressure high ticket sales. Yeah, well, so I think the key here is the format, right? So if I am running a Facebook ad and I'm interrupting you from scrolling and looking at your friends and family and then it comes over and it's like this too good to be true claim and like, like your guards immediately up because it's like someone's trying to sell me something. I didn't ask for this. <laughs> very, di very different in a partnership marketing scenario. Uh, we, again, podcast guesting is the easy example because people are listening to the show. They understand what podcast guesting is. But in this scenario... Like maybe they're a physician or there's someone else who's looking for financial freedom. They're purposefully downloading this episode because they want to have some tool, some case study to follow. Like they want to, maybe they need a new marketing channel and like partnership marketing seems really cool because it doesn't cost, there's no paid ads and it's, it's relational. It builds, it builds on the network. So I think if you have a high ticket offer, if you can simply be yourself get and talk an honest and transparently about what you do and why you do it and why you care, you will much more naturally attract people who would invest in you because, uh, you know, podcast guesting specifically as a strategy is really unique because it's 30 minutes, oftentimes, sometimes 45 minutes. 
of just you telling your story and connecting emotionally with the audience. And, you know, in marketing, we talk about no like, and trust cycles. And so like the Facebook ad example, I don't know that person. They just interrupted me. I clicked over and I, it's going to take a lot to get me to build up, not only to know them and like them, but to actually trust them. Whereas in a single interview, someone can really get to know what you're about and in and, and your ethos. And like, I, I really, I really like resonate with this message and they can know, like, and trust you in a single interview. And if you can shortcut that process and um, educate people in this format, this long form, like educational format, it can really have people be a warm prospect in one interaction. And rather than having like, whatever the number is nowadays, 70 touch points where they have to see your ads and see your emails and hear you see on a billboard and like all these different things to like know, like, and trust you, like you can actually accomplish that very quickly. So that's special about partnership marketing. And I think the other thing that's special is you really borrow authority, right? Like if a host has you on, they've screened you, they understand what you want to talk about. They probably vetted your social media and your website to make sure you're not a crook or a spammer. Um, and so if someone listens to a show on a regular basis and then someone has a guest on and they actually come across as authentic and they know what they're talking about, like, again, you've borrowed a credibility from the format, from the platform, from the host. And uh, that really shortcuts the whole high ticket sales process too. So no longer is high pressure. It's just, you know, it's, it's much more casual because the person listening chose to listen. They continue to listen. They share, they, they believe and trust in the host. And so now they're much more primed to the offer that someone might have for them versus the traditional forms of digital marketing that we've all kind of grown to resent in a lot of ways. Yeah. And uh, so we'll say, um, you know, from a business owner standpoint, I know um, we'll, coming to the end of this uh, session, but, um, you know, from a business owner standpoint, automation, because, you know, guesting takes a lot, you know, you have to contact them, you have to appear, you know, at the way all this. So how do you create a steady flow of highly qualified leads for your B2B business, you know, with this um, partnership marketing system? Yeah, I think for one, you don't need nearly as many leads because again, the leads are warmer. You're not your your funnel is a lot tighter if you think in terms of a sales funnel and traditional sales funnel. A lot of times, if you're bringing cold traffic into a funnel, there's a lot of drop off at every stage because people again aren't necessarily interested in what you do. But if they've encountered you in this partnership marketing format where it's a win win win, everyone's feeling good, there's great value being exchanged, and they get a a, a chance to really know, like, and trust you. I think that's first and foremost is you just have a lot less drop off. The second thing I'm a huge advocate of is outsourcing a lot of the a lot of the legwork of this. So like in a real quick snapshot, the way the framework I work through with people in our mastermind groups and, and other programs, it's five steps. It's five P's. I won't go through them in detail, but it's purpose, plan, pitch, perform, and profit. And purpose is why you're doing it. Plan is which shows you want to be on pitch is getting on them <laughs> and then perform is get showing up and doing a good job. And then profit, of course, is leveraging each of these appearances to actually make the sales. Steps two and three in that process, which is the plan and the pitch are very laborious. They're very repetitive. And so what I like to do is work with the entrepreneur, get them owning that and, and loving the kind of baseline uh, target market and, and master pitch. And then we have, we actually train a virtual assistant for them and we place a virtual assistant with them so that the virtual assistant in five hours a week can actually be running steps two and three all the time. So the entrepreneur literally just shows up to the interview. They don't have to do a lot of, a lot of the legwork any longer. And that that's what makes this scalable because podcast guesting to your point is a little labor intensive. You know, there's, there's a lot of outreach. There's a lot of thought that goes into that. But the great thing is when you set a system up the right way, someone else can do most of that legwork. And then you can just focus on the part that most of us like to do, which is talk about ourselves, talk about <laughs> our business and talk about the transformation we love to provide our clients. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Um, how can uh, how can people uh, contact you, reach out to you, um, follow you? Absolutely. Uh, Simple is my home base. Um, so you can get on there and shoot me an email if you guys have a question about anything I covered. Uh, if you're interested in some free resources, we have a lot of free resources on there about partnership marketing, podcast guesting, et cetera. Uh, and my other platform of choice is LinkedIn. So I post every day on LinkedIn, very active there. Uh, I'm the only Dustin Reekman to my knowledge. Uh, it's R-I-E-C-H in the last name. If you put in Dustin and then R-I-E-C-H, we can definitely connect on LinkedIn and would love to add people to the network there and continue this conversation. Yeah. And uh, for all the audience out there, let's thank um, Dustin for giving priceless wisdom about his experience. This is a really 
new way of um, marketing yourself and creating a brand and it's very um much simpler and if you use his um re- his tactics you can save a lot of time get exposure be sure to follow him on social he's on facebook linkedin instagram as well as his website all these resources will be in the links and show notes and uh, with that let's thank dustin for a fantastic podcast interview all right thank you chris i appreciate the time and the attention it's been a lot of fun listening if you liked it be sure to like comment share subscribe we're on everywhere spotify itunes google amazon audible and without much ado be sure to thank this show's sponsors and we'll see you next week